Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome to all the participants. And uh, today is one of the uh, one of another series of learning session in which we will be learning ECG 2020 workshop. And uh, we have a very famous and renowned speaker and trainer, Dr. Kamran Babar, who is an American uh, diplomat, uh, certified intervention cardiologist, also medical director, consultant cardiologist at Bush International Hospital, Multan. Intervention Cardiologist, CPSP Cardiology Supervisor at Shalamar Hospital. So please welcome Dr. Kamran Babar. I hope you will all enjoy this session. Uh, sir, over to you. All right. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Um, thank you all for joining us. Can I have a very um, interactive and interesting session? Um, I won't take very long. Um, the important thing would be the feedback that uh, I want you guys to use the chat box. This is not going to be a session in which I'm just going to be talking and you're going to be listening. I really want you guys to be a part of this process and uh, we will all learn from each other. All right. So um, ECG is something which uh, bothers lots of us uh, from the very get go. And over the period of time when we spend um, um, seeing patients in out on regular basis, then we start developing comfort uh, in terms of uh, getting to know the ECGs. So what I want you to develop is actually, I want you to be able to organize your thoughts when you're seeing an ECG. And for that, you have to develop a methodology. Um, I hope that you're able to see this uh, slide, everyone. All right, so methodology-wise, what I mean to say is that when you open an ECG in front of you, I want you to spend some time and try to make sure that you're gonna be focused on each in every part of the small checklist that I've given. The tick mark, how does the rate look? How does the rhythm look? What is the axis? How does the P wave look like? Is there is any variation in the PR interval? Is the QRS wide or whether it is narrow? Um, what is the size? Is it too big? Is it showing signs of hypertrophy? Any ischemic changes in ST segments? Any T wave inversions? Rhythm wise, any abnormal beats? Um, whether there are APCs, PVCs, are there any pacing artifacts? So, overall, when you're looking at all of these things, then it might take a little long in the beginning uh, to ponder upon these points. But once you develop a schematic approach to the ECG, then you're not going to be missing much of the diagnosis. And that's actually the whole idea when you are uh, dealing with um, taking care of uh, patients based on the ECG diagnosis. So the basic things when I'm going to be showing you each ECG, it's going to be a short case. And then what are the findings? I'm going to follow actually um, the ABIM, American Board of Internal Medicine worksheet. So it has all the diagnoses that are most commonly used. Um, these are the diagnoses, which are as simple as normal sinus rhythm, tells you about access, how does the left atria look, right atria look, whether there is LVH, RVH, bundle branch, is it a bifascicular block, is there is an AV nodal block, complete heart block. So all major sorts of diagnosis are in there. Um, I hope that some of you would have access to that uh, a sheet because we're going to be using that sheet actually in order to um, make certain diagnoses and take um, uh, a step ahead in, ter in terms of learning this new skill. The important thing is that this actually exercises not for cardiologists as such. This is any internal medicine who is actually medicine or allied. So we're going to be looking at ECGs and we're going to go upon certain diagnoses based on the findings which are there. We might not be able to go into the nitty gritty uh, details of diagnosis, but the major two or three diagnoses is what normally are required on one ECG case, because that will help you decipher and plan for the medical management of the patient. So um, when we're looking at the P wave, the important tip is that in lead two, three and AVF, these are the leads actually, which are telling us what they see from below, from the lower side of the heart. Mind you, that whenever you're seeing an ECG, all these leads that you see are actually your reporters. So if you're talking about lead one and AVL, 
these are your reporters sitting on the left side of the heart. Okay, so they're going to be telling us what is going on on the lateral wall of an LV. If you're going to be asking 2-3 AVF about a certain heartbeat, they're going to be telling their perspective of the cardiac activity, the electrical impulse, which is coming uh, from their point of view. They're going to be looking from below. So if the beat is coming from the top and is going towards the inferior leads, the complex is going to be upward. And that is a basic understanding of the concept that we all need to understand, that when we are looking at a certain um, ECG lead, that lead is only going to be telling us what they are seeing. If the electrical impulse is coming towards them, it's going to be an upward complex on the ECG in that particular lead. But if it is a downward, that means it's going away from their positive terminal. Um, whenever you're seeing a wide complex um, ECG, uh, most commonly the origin is ventricular. Access wise, uh, the major thing that you need to understand is that you just have to focus. You see this graph on the side, the one in AVF. These two leads will help you tell us what is the axis of this resultant electrical vector. If the electricity is going to be starting from an SA node and it's going to go towards the AV node and down to the ventricles and Purkinje system, then your majority of electric current is going towards the left. And your lead one and AVF are both going to be showing an upward deflection. And that is what will denote a normal axis between one and AVF. So we, most of the time, are expecting the axis to be normal. But of course, when you see someone with left ventricular hypertrophy, which is drawing all the electrical forces towards the left, the thick left ventricle was generating more of an electricity, the resultant vector of the electricity is gonna to go towards the left. In the same way, if someone has right ventricular hypertrophy or there is a mediastinal shift because of either pneumothorax or um, this dextrocardia, then of course, most of the electrical forces are gonna to go towards the right. In that case, the one lead one will show a negative deflection because it's going away from lead one and ABF might be positive because still it's electricity coming from top to the bottom. So these are the things that you need to understand um, in terms of access and that is all you need to gather the information from access for majority of the cases. The P wave is important, especially in if there is a left ventricular hypertrophy, you might see a biphasic like alif madda ki tarase, P wave in the lead V1 uh, if you see tall P waves, more than two small boxes in lead two, of course, there is right atrial enlargement denoted by that. Um, whenever you're seeing a right bernal branch block, that means that in lead V1, there is going to be two R, S, R prime, two peaks which are going to be seen. And those two peaks in lead V1 with a wide complex will denote a right bernal branch block. And normally it's associated with an S wave in lead one AVL or the lateral leads V5, V6, a broad notched uh, S wave is seen in those. Um, LBB pattern is just a large Q wide complex um, in a V1, and that's when we see that tells us that it is a right vernal branch block. If it is associated with a left axis deviation, we call this a left anterior hemi block. And if it, there is a right vernal branch block with a right axis deviation, then it is a biphysical block with the left posterior hemi block, which is responsible for that shape of the ECG. Uh, 